The Prophet, before God sent him as a messenger, before he, did, he gave him the religion of Islam, what was his religion? Did he have a religion? Was he a Jew? Was he a Christian? Was he on the path of Ibrahim? None of that. What is it? There are three opinions over here amongst the scholars. The first opinion says, the Prophet was a prophet before he received the message of Islam. Even when he was a boy, even when he was born, he was already a prophet, but he had not announced that to the people. So he would receive revelation from God, God would inspire him with teachings, and he was not instructed by God to go public with it. So during those 40 years, the prophet was a prophet. He received inspiration and revelation from God, but he was not ordered to convey that message to his people. At the age of 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, now go public with your message. We have a number of hadiths about this, that the Prophet before the age of 40, he was a messenger, he did receive revelation from God. So he had his message from Allah, he did not follow any other sharia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed to him his teachings, his religion and his sharia. And it was Islam, it was the religion of Islam, he would practice the religion of Islam, however not publicly. And he would not publicly preach about the religion of Islam. This is just like Isa alayhi salam. The Quran says that Jesus when he was born, he was a prophet. He says, I am a prophet. When he was a baby and he spoke in that incident, he says, I'm a prophet. But he was not responsible for going public with his message. So Jesus when he was just a few months old, was he a prophet or not? Yes, he was. Did he have a sharia, a message to convey to the people? No, not yet. Later Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, go and preach. Uh, to your people. So it's the same with the Prophet. He became a messenger at the age of 40, but before that he was a Prophet and he would receive revelation and he would be inspired by Allah just as the baby Jesus would be inspired by Allah. So that is the first person, the, the first uh, opinion amongst our ulama. Al-Allam al-Majlisi, a very prominent scholar who is the author of Bihar, Al-Anwar, which is a 110 volume work on the hadiths, he is of that opinion. He says, I've examined the hadiths and he's an expert on hadiths, the hadith of Ahlul Bayt, and they seem to indicate that he was a prophet even before the age of 40. So that was his religion, Islam, he received it from God, however he was not ordered by God to convey it or deliver it. Yes, did you have a question? Okay, that's the first opinion. What is the second opinion? The second opinion states that he followed the path of the Hanifiyya. One of the titles of Ibrahim is Hanif, Ibrahim al-Hanif, Ibrahim the right one, the righteous one, the one who's on the right path, the upright one. Hanifiyya means the upright religion. We know that the grandfathers of the Prophet, they followed the Hanifiyya, they were on the path of Ibrahim السلام, So whatever the religion of Ibrahim was, they followed that religion. So Abdullah, Abdul Muttalib, the grandfathers of the Prophet, when we said that they were faithful and they worshipped God, what was their religion? Their religion was the religion of Ibrahim السلام, which we call the Hanifiyya. Now remember it's not the Hanafiyya, Hanifiyya. Hanafiyya are those who follow Abu Hanifa, that's a Sunni school of thought. This is Hanifiyya, there's a, there's a ya over there, an extra vowel. And that is the path of Ibrahim salam. Now one could ask the question, but Ibrahim was not the final messenger before the Prophet. You had Musa and Isa salam. wasn't Jesus the last universal messenger? So how come they were not Christians? How come they did not follow the path of Isa salam? Why did they follow Ibrahim? What was the reason? Scholars have indicated that while Prophets Ibrahim and Jesus and Moses are universal messengers, Prophet Ibrahim was the most universal messenger. His message was universal for the entire world. Jesus and Moses, even though they were universal prophets, but they were sent to Bani Israel. 
not to the entire world. Is there a verse in the Quran that proves this or not? Yes. Surah Ali Imran, the third chapter, verse 49. When Jesus is speaking about himself and his prophethood, he says, وَرَسُولًا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ أَنِّي قَدْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِآيَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ He says, I'm a messenger for Bani Israel. I have signs and scriptures for you. So Prophet Isa alayhi salam, his main message was for the Jewish people, for Bani Israel, the children of Israel. So those who were not from the Bani Israel, they still could continue on the path of who? Abraham alayhi salam. They were not obligated to follow the Sharia of Musa and Isa. If they wanted to, that was fine, that was optional. But they could just stick to the Sharia of Ibrahim. Because Musa and Isa were specifically sent for Bani Israel, and this is the proof from the Quran. Therefore, the grandfathers, the Arabs in Mecca, those who were believers, they were on the path of Ibrahim. They had the religion of Ibrahim, and the Prophet also was on that religion, the religion of the Hanifiya. Now what is the religion of the Hanifiya? Al-Imam al-Sadiq explains to us in a beautiful hadith, the religion of Prophet Ibrahim did not have this very detailed Sharia that we have, or the Jewish Sharia. You know the Jewish code of law is very detailed. The Islamic code of law is very detailed. The religion of Ibrahim did not have this elaborate Sharia system. The Imam السلام, says, Kanat Sharia to Ibrahim, the religion of Ibrahim, Tawheed, believe in one God, Wal Ikhlas, be sincere, offer your actions only to Allah, don't worship any idols, and this is really the fitrah. The Imam says that's the fitrah. He was instructed to pray. Not any particular manner, just pray to Allah, know that you have a creator, worship the Almighty God. You don't have to do it in four units, rak'ahs, just pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enjoin the good, forbid the evil. There was no laws of inheritance, the laws of inheritance that if you leave a family behind, you know this amount goes to your son, to your daughter, to your wife, this is something that later sharia is brought forth and the Qur'an brought forth. The Sharia of Ibrahim, you did not have the laws of inheritance. Yes? So about the other prophets, though, you still have to believe that they're prophets because... You still have to believe they're messengers, yes. A Muslim is the one who believes in all prophets, but you don't follow their Sharia. You follow the Sharia of your own prophet. Now the core is the same. Belief in God, Day of Judgment, Justice of God, that stays the same. But some of the details, like how you pray, how you go to Hajj, these could be different. And then you also had in the Sharia of Prophet Ibrahim circumcision. So those believers who believed in the path of Ibrahim, they would also be circumcised. And you also had the Hajj, that you would do pilgrimage to the Hajj. This is the religion of Ibrahim. So those believing grandfathers of the Prophet, they were on the path of Ibrahim alayhi salam. They followed that religion and this was acceptable to follow. If you were not from Bani Israel, you were not obligated to follow the Sharia of Musa or the Sharia of Isa alayhi salam. Now there's one problem with this opinion and this is why you have a third opinion. Some say, some argue, Prophet Muhammad is greater than the Prophet Ibrahim. He's superior to him. He's higher in rank than him. So if he's higher in rank than him, how would God allow him to follow another prophet who is lower in rank from him? Some just have this, you know, uh, this logic that this is not right. Because when you follow someone else, that other person whom you're following should be greater than you. Why would God ask you to follow someone if you're greater than that person? and you have a higher status than that other prophet. So some give us a third opinion and they say that what the prophet used to practice is the exact same religion of Ibrahim, but he wasn't following the religion of Ibrahim. Just as God revealed to Ibrahim 
practice my faith this way. He revealed to Prophet Muhammad, practice my faith this way. So it's the same as the teachings of Ibrahim but he wasn't following them, he was receiving them from Allah, but it happened to be that they were exactly the same sharia, the same religion. In that regard we could say he did not actually follow him and that's why there's one hadith from the Imam السلام, he says the Prophet once after mentioning Ibrahim, he says Dinuhu Dini, his religion is my religion and my religion is his religion, Wadini Dinu. وَسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّتُهُ سُنَّتِي وَسُنَّتِي سُنَّتُهُ My path is his path, his path is my path. In other words, he's saying, I'm not following him, we just have the same path, we have the same religion. His religion is my religion, my religion is his religion. We were both inspired by God to go by this path. So I'm not really following him, but I have the same religion.